did get back to XDG form when they put Xmithy back in the jungle. Zuna back in the AD carry position. That's when they got their win over Cloud9. The two previous games were when Zuna was in the jungle. And the team wasn't meshing very well. Still seeing bands come out here. That's exactly where they are focused, is in the jungle with a Renekton on the side. Yeah, two uh, jungle bands from Cloud9, actually. That's more focused than you usually see. Mm -hmm. But they definitely want to keep Smithy off of his comfort champions because Smithy has been a huge, huge part in XCG's success back when they were having so much success. And they want to keep him off balance and keep him underperforming because since the return to the jungle, yep. it's been a bit rocky and uh, not quite the all-star return that everybody was hoping for. Also looking for ManCloud to be doing some things. His play has been a, a bit more stable, but not the carry play we're so used to from Man Mandatory Cloud in the mid lane. Looks like Meteos, a first pick coming in for Evelyn. So it's a really big takeaway from Smithy, because Smithy definitely favors this champion. So Lee Sin and Evelyn, two of his biggest. And then Pantheon was the fallback. So they've done a very good job of targeting uh, Smithy, while also making sure that the Lulu pick mm -hmm. won't go through since they're first picking Evelyn. They don't want to leave up that lane bully for mid because they need High to be able to make plays. High is really, really, uh, Cloud9 thrives when they, when High has control of mid lane and is able to roam around. Well, it seems like they definitely put a lot of pressure and respect towards Xsmithy. Taking that out leaves Cloud9 to think that their lanes are going to be the stronger for the win. So they're going to be able to keep Xsmithy on the back burner. We'll see if the regulars of Sneaky Lemonation at the bottom and Balls in the top can do that. We know High looking at CS graphs here between media or High and Cloud, Man Cloud. High is far and away above Man Cloud at the 10 minute mark and the 20 minute mark in CS, which means that lane is controlled. The dragon fights become easier. A lot of things just coming from one lane. Cloud9 looking to pick up the next two here for themselves. And it is a quick Corky and Karma. Ah, interesting little duo here. Uh, Corky definitely has great poke once he does hit that level 6 and get some rockets coming in. Karma can carry the burden of poke early on. Mm. So I like the, the burst damage of this uh, bottom lane matchup here. And Karma also brings a lot of speed later in the game, which is great with Evelyn as well, who's going to be trying to flank in. And Evelyn, Evelyn sort of shifted from uh, an AP assassin to this uh, AD, melee AD carry sort of, because she goes AD early uh, to get the burst and the power in the jungle, and then transitions into a lot of tanky items since she is melee, and wants to be able to stay in that fight. Well, we saw what Kiwi Kid did with it the first time he brought it out in NALCS. Some 300 HP as the team was just ramping up on those picks. Gonna see Elise come out here after taking the hits. It's pretty much all that Smithy has left as the Thresh gets locked in for Sheep. All right, so this is a weaker Elise. And uh, we'll have to see how Smithy does on the champion because Elise is one that if you're a bit rusty, you know, you really, the cocoons that you miss hurt you a lot with Elise, especially now after the changes. So we'll have to see how comfortable Smithy is with this champion since it was Cloud9's pick ban strategy to focus him and put him off balance. What an interesting team we have here coming in from Cloud9. A quirky pick up for Sneaky. Looks like Soraka will be in the lineup once again. Balls not going to Trundle, trending to him too much. He actually only has one play on Trundle, but his Renekton is banned, so you got to figure. Yep, the uh, the third in the cho the top choices of those yep. uh, top lane bruiser champions. Pretty standard there. Balls has really been favoring those top, uh, the three top uh, bruisers for top lane. So that'll be an interesting matchup. I think that Balls will actually have a pretty good upper hand. But man, it's really strong poke comp here from Cloud9. As we talked about Corky and Karma already, when right. you add in Soraka and Trundle, Trundle pillars are amazing disengage. Wow. And Soraka will keep everybody topped off constantly giving back mana and health here. It's a very, very, very scary poke comp here from Cloud9. And then meanwhile, the new Kogma. We do get to see the Kogma after the changes. This has been one of Zuna's favorite champions. Very excited to see what he can do with this in lane especially. Had it nine plays in the last split. Zuna definitely loves his Kogma. One of the early, not invades, but they set themselves up on the top side tri brush with Kogma. It was the first time they beat Cloud9, and it was getting ahead in the early game. 
You guys get that Kog'Maw head early and he's going to start cleaning up quite quick. Great pickups coming in from both teams here. If you're XDG, you know, coming into a fight, actually, let's get the votes first. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Super Week is just going too fast in my brain. But as the teams load down to the rift, we slow down for a second. Your predictions have told us that 91% of you think that Cloud9 will take the first win of the day from LOL Esports. First win of the day is going to be first pick of Corky in that North American LCS and the first pick of yeah. Kogma going up against each other. Very excited for this one. I The new Kogma seems a lot stronger just from looking at it. I don't play a lot of AD carry, but it uh, seems like he's got a lot of uh, extra power here with the percentage shred and being able to use it without having to get close to people the mana cost. just feels better. Mana so cost on nice. W, gone. We talked about no mana cost means more fun. Absolutely. Going with the Earth strategy. The future. <laughs> it's coming. But looking at this team, now that we kind of have it in front of us, if you're XDG, how do you approach a fight against this Cloud9 team or disengage from it? So you, you, whatever, yeah, whatever floats your boat. I really do like the last couple picks here from XDG. It, they're very similar sets of champions here mm -hmm. because they've got Ziggs and Kogma for sieging up as well. Okay. And they have Thresh for, Thresh for disengage. So this is a very, very interesting matchup here between the two sides. The sustain, however, is definitely going to be in favor of Cloud9. If the fights go long, Cloud9 will probably have the advantage, especially level one. Level one, uh, yeah. Soraka is a beast. We've seen it before. Mm -hmm. He is running barrier once again. So he's going to charge into all as many people as he can see and get as many star, star calls down as he can. Call down as much as possible. We'll see if they get that happening. Spell Thief's going on to Lemon. On to the Karma. Sheep starts Dorans as XDG puts themselves posturing for a little bit of aggression here, but a very early ward is just going to kind of sweep everything out. Yeah, Elimination starting with the Frost Fang. Whatever it is. Spell Thief's Edge is the first, yeah. first iteration, which allows him to start with a ward as well. I mean, we talked up the level ones for these guys as well. Uh, XDG with the defensive mm -hmm. ward on their red buff. They're prepared for it. Cool little fact is that Lemon Nation has the most wards cleared as a support. Kudos to him. It's interesting because he often, more often than anybody else, will start with a sweeper. Mm -hmm. Not many people at all have ever started with a sweeper. But sometimes uh, Lemon Nation will straight level one go at that. And that's kind of a trigger as well. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little tip off that you, they'll be trying to do something in level one right. when he does start with a sweeper. This time, he has not. However, they are still making some moves down there. Everything they did really stopped XDG. They saw the ward right in front of him. I don't know if XDG was going to move any closer, but they're finding a little bit of uh, pressure in here towards the blue. Forcing out Smite early, possibly, but they're only waiting for Lemonation to fire something off and grab that. Yeah. He's pushed off, and they will go to lane. Nobody's going to grab two first there. Good harass there from Lemonation, mm -hmm. and he gets a charge early on his Spell Thieves. So extra money in their favor. <laughs> All the cash. Putting the pressure onto Zuna. That auto attack coming from Sheep. A little extra AD on the Flay choice. We'll see how they go from here. This should be quite a fun lane to watch. You got star calls all day, but the seed pressure of Zig, so they'll probably just stay evened out here. Yeah, both of these champions like to shove. Uh, High definitely has to get a little bit oh. closer, so it's it's more more dangerous for High to do his shoving. Soraka mid often draws a lot of jungle attention, and so the Soraka's jungler will also often hang around mid lane for counter ganks. So Meteos will probably be setting up a lot of his moves from that mid lane, mm -hmm. trying to work with high more often than he does, usually. <laughs> Get a little more kill pressure down. Slight gold lead coming just from the CS in the lanes here. Oh, man. And a bit of elimination getting some gold for himself as he attacks away. Good push up by Sneaky. You can see Super Freeze on the lane. He's just going to go ahead and try to get everything as possible. Yeah, Karma lanes, they depend a lot on hitting the Qs, and Lemonation has hit most of his Qs early on, uh, keeping Zuna back. Now that the wave is at the turret, this is really crunch time. Can he catch up? Because he's, he's down a lot. Very nice shield there. Not too much can be focused on. Zuna's trying to get all the CS. Yeah, the problem with harassing while you're pushed into your turret is that every attack you're using to harass there, mm. at, even though the hook landed, you're losing minions every second because the tower is taking away money right there. And Zuna was not able to catch up as much as he wanted farming under the turret there. 
So yep. pretty big lead secured for Cloud9 in the bottom lane, even though Sheep was able to make what looked like a pretty good play. Going for Harass over CS right now uh, doesn't really help this XDG mm -hmm. bottom lane since they're not going to be able to bully Sneaky out. 21 to 11 already in that CS, so levels are definitely going to come into consideration here as we get 4, 5, and 6 in place. Ooh. We'll have to see that tank buster that is Kog'Ma can still come back in this game. Elise, Zuna knows how to do it. Elise is hovering down bottom, mm -hmm. uh, turned back towards the white, but he might still be able to make a move. Thresh lanes are amazing to gank as Elise because not only can you come in with the lantern, but then you still have your repel. So uh, you basically have two gap closers with the repel and the lantern combo. They really want to pull this off. Hopefully not to correct a mistake. <laughs> that one. She just missed it on the edge. A good dodge out by See, Lemonation. Look at the, the, the little eyeballs there over Zuna. Means mm -hmm. that they gave vision. Oh, a nice play. Misses the cocoon. Should have that hook back up quite soon here. Sheep's going to try to get into range. They void use the sneaky. Not enough slow coming out on the end of that. All right, jungler shows bottom. High's free to go super aggressive. Soraka loves this. That's shred. The only thing Soraka uh, in the mid lane has to worry about is jungle ganks. So. Elise showing bottom, yep. he's free to go aggressive. It also triggers Ooh. Meteos to start his jungle invading. And I love the way that Sneaky's playing. Even though he gets hit up by Voidus, he's still hugging the minion. Sheep can't do anything to get a hook on him. So he's just forced to stay there. Sneaky able to put himself in a pretty scary position to keep himself on top in the lane. Elimination, easy on the, the wards. They know they have this one pretty much controlled so far. High has been having fun, like you said. 35 to 34, not too much of a lead in that mid lane, but he has seen no pressure as it's now going to the top. Benny's gonna be forced to flash. The pillar goes down, and that is gonna be a dead Benny. There it goes, Medios and Balls coming up with first blood. Nice move from Medios. Not only does he get his counter jungling off and leave a ward in the jungle, very important ward by the Wraith camp, but easy to rotate up top. There's nothing that Benny can do to ward this early against Evelyn unless he backs very, very early to spend money on a pink ward. So very, very well executed from Cloud9. Balls and Medios again with one of the early kills. We see this so often from that duo. Usually it's them tower diving, but since Balls now this time around is using Trundle, more yeah. defensive champ, he just waits for Benny to play into his Ooh. hand, overextend in the lane. Lemon Nation going pretty hard with low mana, but they're trying to play the behavior here. He's going to get the Gatling down. Good shred. Lemon trying to get into the brush. Throws his shield down just in time, but they are still in a bad position. Sheep on the outside doesn't want to take too much. Sneaky 2v1 now to get himself in a safe spot as Lemon has to take the long road around. I think they got a little extra help there from from the heal from high as well, who rotates mm -hmm. down mid lane. The wish coming out. Just adds his pink ward though. Doesn't want to go through with any uh, gank attempt. So with the gank going into the bottom lane now, as we see pressure back into the bottom, are, is Cloud9 expected to repeat on Benny, or do they leave Shivana alone now and focus on the lanes? Uh, Cloud9 are feeling very confident about their bottom lane. Uh, Corky almost up to level six now. He's had a very easy road to the level six. And with the extra wards that uh, even their mid laner is warding for them, they're feeling very secure. We already saw how they played right. the Elise Lantern gank well. Uh, Lemon definitely feeling pretty confident, but since he had to burn his flash for that, he'll have to be a bit more safe. They might think about warding this little tribush that's over the river, sort of behind the turret by the duo lane, because that's where Elise will be coming from if it's a repeat gank. Level six coming out for quite a few around the map. We'll have to see how Mega Inferno Bomb calculates when you get Wish coming in as well. If that comes up in a fight, pretty much negate all that area of effect damage you get towards a dragon. The next AG might be out a little bit of luck. We got to remember back in these games when XDG was Ooh. able to grab any of the dragons, that's the games they were able to win. In their losses, they got no barons and no dragons. So Evelyn can actually get really close to the minions because they can't see her. He's going to scare him off the buff and try and pull it into the bush to be able to steal it. This is the value that you get from buying wards. Now, people who don't like to buy wards and would rather have combat stats, oh, I got a little cloth armor. You have to sort of weigh the opportunity cost of the cloth armor to the vision which allows you to pick winning fights where you don't even have to use combat stats. A little lockdown there on to Zuna. Still pushing him out. They have full control of the bottom lane. We haven't even seen Meteos come down here because he knows he can stay top. He can help mid. 
and keep the game flowing in their favor. A thousand, just over a thousand gold lead already. We've been only in the lanes. Yeah, they're very, very confident. We might even be starting to have to think about tower dives for the bottom. Mm -hmm. Once, uh, you know, Medios decides to make his way over, it could get dangerous. This pink ward will see Smithy, but it might be the time where they get to clear out the pink ward. Oh, five hits is quite a bit of time to stand still. You can see oh, XTG trying to pinch in on oh, this. Bait. No cocoon from Smithy. They don't know where high is on the backside. So clear out both sides. Th this is a big improvement from Medios from last time, though, because the previous two times he's played Evelyn, he's walked past this bush without checking it. Not anymore. Se he wants to watch the last replay yeah. when you're like, Medios never goes in the brush. So now he does. Do it for Kobe. Benny still pushed back to his turret. Ball's playing a very good trundle in the top lane at that CS lead, coming up on about 17, 18 CS, and he's not having any troubles a level ahead. Very, very scary here for Benny that the trundle is so far ahead of him because it is going to get worse. He's going offensive build trundle here. All right, Lantern Gank attempt number two. All that Lemon has to do is play a little bit safer. You can see him playing very far back, and Sneaky doesn't hesitate to use his dash. Now, all things considered, when you actually need a gank like that and it doesn't work, how bad is it? How much time have you kind of wasted? Well, there's not a lot of options for Smithy right now. Uh-oh. Hook oh. does land, though. Oh, there's an option for Zuna, but they're still not able to get it. Sneaky keeping that wave frozen outside the turret range. And Medios would have been ready. Because anywhere Smithy goes, he has to worry about an Evelyn counter gank since mm. they don't have enough pink wards here. Speaking of Evelyn counter gank. <laughs> on a pink ward this time. Everybody's trying to fight. They do get the lantern that time, but this is in defense. But they're all beat up, and this is going to yeah. be a lot of tower pressure for Cloud9. Even though they don't kill anybody, they have complete control of this side. Nice. The Siege minion stays alive, so it can take an extra few shots. Zuna very low. That auto attack is not going to be enough. No missiles coming from Sneaky right now, and XDG is sitting on the wayside as their turret gets some damage. Yep, so you can see Cloud9 take complete control of this side of the map. They can easily get a dragon now, even though the minion wave was killed by Mantor Cloud Ziggs, and they can't siege on the turret anymore. They know that they just forced everyone back. Should be a very easy dragon. Not Lemon trying to do trouble. the uh, the micro there. Get dragon <laughs> wasting time, turning back and forth, changing targets so that he has to continually restart the attack animation, thus reducing his yeah. damage output. Then once they perfect it, we'll just make a Dragon get more angry, and he stacks when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> angry Dragon. 16.3, 14.1. Benny trying to breathe enough fire to keep balls at bay in the top lane. Second play for him on Trundle, and he is just having a heyday up here, really not finding too much pressure. He's gotten the first blood along with the help of Medio, so he's sitting pretty. Yeah, Nien the other week was uh, just talking about his <laughs> love for Trundle as a champion as well. Taking him, uh, talking yeah. about how he's good in every situation. Ball stepping up here as well. I like it. Look at his movement towards back, towards back, playing with the behavior of Smithy here. Smithy can't figure out whether he sees him or not. I think he has a good idea about it now. Yeah. It's a great way to gain small advantages mm -hmm. for your team. As long as you don't telegraph that you have a wave or you don't have a <laughs> ward in that push, you can use up so much of the jungler's time. And you can see how Cloud9's focus, not only in the pick and bands phase, but also inside the game on Smithy. They've kept him a non-factor. Elise 0, zero, zero mm -hmm. at 13 minutes is a very big win for Cloud9. He hasn't been able to do pretty much anything, and Midos even was able to steal away one of the buffs. So Cloud9, even though it's only one kill, are controlling this game so well. Third attempt to down bottom here from Smithy. That turret's not gonna last very long. Sneaky has the missiles, Zuna has the artillery fire, and he puts one out. But it doesn't look like it's gonna be enough to stave off that first turret going down. More gold going to that bottom lane now, who's getting pretty big already. Oh, a near man. 40 CS lead. Yeah, and as we transition into mid game or Cloud9 start grouping up, Corky with a Soraka on his team that will continually give him mana back is so scary. He'll be able to fire out missiles all day long, and High will just be able to replenish his mana. It's going to be a very, very difficult uh, siege for XDD to defend against, even though they have the best champion in the game for it, Ziggs. 
Cloud9 doing what they do best now. They've won a lane, so they're going to start taking over your jungle. A quick rotation from the entire team, leaving Sneaky to farm mid is probably going to give XDG some trouble here. Smithy gets his red. He did lose his last one, so you can see Cloud9 even trying to keep the timer on that. Yeah, they tried to get in position for it a little bit too slow, though. Right. And Smithy's able to at least get his buff this time around. Setting up. Dragon's coming up in a few minutes. About, about three on it. Cloud9 grabbing that one in their favor. Now 3,000 gold lead with the bottom turret open. Oh, too Zuna. much to open up the rest of the map. But it does give Sneaky. Got the sight. Nice Phosphorus Bomb to come out. He has been leveling the Phosphorus Bomb in lane yeah. for the damage you've been seeing him do. Oh, the last auto attack! The shield just stayed on long enough. That's why XCG prioritized Thresh. <laughs> if Zuna gets caught out a little bit on one of these immobile AD carries that he really likes, Sheep's there to save him. Well, we think back to their preview show when Zuna was on Caitlyn and he was dying over and over and over. It's because he was out in the distance trying to farm. But like you said, with a Thresh, he can do that safely. Just trying to get some CS back in this because yeah. they really need him to be a factor late game. But bottom was bullied so ridiculously hard yeah. that XCG do not have a lot of threat. Moving towards mid. Benny coming in high, takes a bit of damage there, but they got the shield on. Balls wants to go deep on this one. It is going to be the subjugate going down. The ignite could hit right here, but it's going to be the hate spike coming out. There's the Mega Inferno. High gets hit up, but they're going to call it down onto Smithy. The infuse comes out from high and takes him down. Man Cloud doing what he can to clean up what can be done here in the top lane, but it looks like he might put himself in a bad spot. Oh, no, was, this I seems to be in his advantage. The barrier goes down. Meteos comes in with a hate spike. Balls, could he get the pillar up? Oh, oh, but he goes down. Whoopsies. Faded your teammate. Yeah, he was thinking about trying to add in a pillar there, but uh -oh. too close. Uh-oh, hook, line, and sinker coming in. Does he have the skills to pay the bills? It's Sheep trying to get the kills down. The buff gets transferred over to Man Cloud. Very nicely played and good follow-up from XDG. Yeah, Sheep and Man Cloud really trying to pull the weight here for XDG, but look what happened bottom. This Corky is pretty much out of control. They got another turret. They're all the way up to inhibitor turrets on that bottom lane. And that means that the next dragon is going to be really hard for them to fight over because now Sneaky and Lemon Nation can easily roam. They can rotate up towards that mid turret. If Cloud9 get that mid turret down, then Smithy's jungle is no longer going to be his own. You know, he was he was able to grab his last red buff yeah, barely. The third one. Because Cloud9 were doing such a good job with timing and warding. But the next one, if they get this mid turret, he will have very, very few chances to secure his own jungle. Yeah, Cloud9 is ready to open up the middle of this map and to deny that much more vision to XDG. Something they're trying to keep up. We see Sheep getting himself out. The sight stone there. Pink wards as well in hand of a few members on XDG as they know once Cloud9 gets a hold, they do not let go. They will suffocate you right away. And this stage, too, is this is the only stage where Cloud9 don't really have a very, very strong tank. Because Trundle started damage and Evelyn starts damage, as usual, they, they didn't have anybody who was that beefy. They only had Soraka, really. But from this point on, everybody is going to be really hard to tank down. Midos is going to start building tank. Trundle's going to start building tank, and Soraka can heal whoever your target is with Lemonation shielding them. This entire team is going to be ridiculously hard to take down. Nobody is going to be a weak spot on this Cloud9 team for the team fights, so it's going to have to be just a lot of continuous damage output from XCG. Flash from Lemonation, but never too far off is another member of the team, as you see sneaky missiles coming in from the right side. They set up for Dragon now, Kobe. Cloud9 are split, though. That's a small window for XCG. Now they're funneled into the small avenue, though. Oh, no. Smithy by himself on the other side of the wall. A great flash, though, to get himself to safety there. But they're going to lose pressure on Dragon and a lot of HP. Sneaky, also low. Yeah, Hyatt probably going to try and uh, wait for the cooldown, heal Sneaky back up, and then do something around Dragon. They got some good damage onto Smithy. Keeping himself safe. Nobody wants to take any extra foolish wow. damage right here. It could mean your life if you were trying to get away with a sliver. The wards are down, man. Cloud, Cloud still split. may not be able to enter into this fight. Mega Inferno Bomb is down. This is all about the smites. No, it's actually going to be hit over to Zuna as he gets the last auto attack. Benny trying to get himself out with the Dragon's Descent and into the fight a little bit. That's going to be his death. XDG runs for the hills, but they grab the Dragon. So they get a Dragon and they lose a the Dragon. Interesting trade for XDG. Gives Cloud9 the opportunity to take that mid turret I was talking about. They really want this one down. 
It's going to be a tough mid game. Cloud9 pushing all these lanes after XTG got that. They want to say, you got uh -oh. something, we're going to take more right now. Waiting for the next minion wave in mid. Medio seems like he's going to clear out some jungle, but also get a push on the bottom turret. Mancloud is doing a really good job this game. He's zoning several people at once with the Ziggs. He has double buffs, so he's able to mm. continually throw out the damage, and he was wave clearing uh, to the best of his abilities. But now the double buffs have run out. Oh, sneaky. Very, very close. He gets himself out that time, even if he does shift in. He's got the safety this time. Yeah, those are the heals and shields I was talking about before. It's going to be really hard for XCG to kill anyone on Cloud9, even if they catch him out of position like that. It was a great job, though. They wave clear and immediately throw out the, uh, the hooks and the cocoons to try and snag somebody. You catch him off guard by... Uh, instantly wave clearing and then throwing out your skill shots. But still, too many shields. At least the barrier was burned and the flash was burned from Sneaky. So they did get very, very good cooldowns out of Cloud9 for the next fight. Taking a glimpse at the inventories real quick. That CS in favor of Man Cloud. Correcting myself earlier, I did say hi. I had the CS favor. He's actually one of the lower farmers in the league. But Benny and Balls, those two against each other, Benny's actually faring well off, more than he usually does in this lane. Usually 20 CS behind by this point. So hopefully he can get to a very tanky point. Zuna can tank bust down Balls once he gets to that point. XCG kind of still has a chance here with their team. Still got Man Cloud on Ziggs, and he's 2-0 and this game. Definitely picking up some pace. Yeah, they definitely do, uh, st still do have a pretty good mm -hmm. chance with the defensive capabilities of Ziggs. Uh, they, they, can, they do not need to give up hope that early. But talking about Benny, yeah, three deaths, and he's still keeping up in CS. Pretty strong showing. As for high, it's hard to CS with Soraka because yeah. uh, Star Call is, uh, it takes some getting used to. So you need to put in a <laughs> lot of games on one of those solo lane Sorakas to be able to CS very effectively. Leave it up to Cloud9 though. Balls will play Rumble in the top lane and out farm his lane. High will play Soraka. Get some farm, but not out farm it. Soon, soon TM. 21 minutes on the clock, four to two. 3,000 gold lead, 4,000 gold lead, I should say, as they're at 31,000. And it looks like it's only the slow pressure now from Cloud9. They don't want to put themselves in a bad spot here. There's no reason to die because you need a ward. Uh-oh, maybe. Maybe there is. I'm safe. All right, so uh, XCG are definitely going to be looking for picks here. Uh -oh. Looks like Sheep's the one who gets picked off. He didn't use Agony's Embrace. They're actually just doing regular abilities. He throws down Agony's Embrace in the end. Once X Smithy gets to the fight, and it's going to be a very quick disengage from both teams. Sheep getting out with a sliver of health. Everybody from XCG goes down back towards the mid, though, and Cloud9 rotating up top. They might be able to pressure this one. Now the reflexive yep. movements from XCG trying to get back up there. Adapting very quickly, but is it too late? They just got hit up pretty hard in that fight. They're not going to have Sheep, and that knowledge is privy to Cloud9. But they also don't have Corky. No long-range attack really to come in other than Lemonation. Yeah, Corky trying to get the last few hits onto that mid turret, but Ziggs is so <laughs> hard to push against. Almost has it. Man Cloud's nearly out of mana as Meteos. Going Metal Gear on this one. He's they call up the Sneaky backside. too, they want to fight this. Sheep is there, Sneaky moving. Mega Inferno Bomb is not up for Man Cloud. He's got to make the long haul with low mana. One for one going down as it just gets dropped onto Benny. Xmithy very low, taking shots from Sneaky. He's got the shield on from Lemon Nation's Karma. Balls, no shield needed there. The tank guy getting himself Man in. Man Cloud. Now the 3v4 as they start to set themselves up in a line, but that line allows them, Cloud9, to focus out whoever they want. A quick kill going down each side of the team in the Retribution fight. And it looks like it's 7-4. Oh, Zuna, four. Zuna wants mana. more. Can't get an ooze. Can't get the attacks in. And they stay off the fight. All right. Good fight up top. Uh, very close. Only two for two, though. Or two for three. So XDG actually coming out on the bottom there. No turret damage was given up, though. They were able to save both turrets for a little while longer. That's all the XDG are looking for right now. They're trying to stall, get back in the game. Start off, they focus down high and get the early ignite on him. So they are eventually able to take him down. But once Sneaky rotates up here before Mantoy Cloud, that's why Cloud9 are able to get the early advantage. And as we said, Balls wasn't building very tanky from the start. Mm. Starting Blade of the Ruined King, then going Magic Resist. So tower hits definitely hurting a lot. Let's see the burst damage onto Ooh. Corky right there. Zuna and Mancloud combining for another Retribution kill. 
Cloud9 moving that one pretty fast. It was nice to have Zuna firing over the wall, but you could see Cloud9 react to that and say, we are in a bad spot. Seven to four, 24 minutes on the clock. Man Cloud's gonna pick up blue. We got 20 seconds on Dragon, and Cloud9 knows that. Did he get it? Put big Sneaky pressure got on. it with the big one, I think. Did get it, that is a freshie. Nope, they want it back. <laughs> Not gonna happen. They watched that one walk away. So now a red buff and a blue buff throughout the game, stolen away from XDG to play on that mentality. We'll see how they hold this mid turret. It's been a while, but they put up a good fight here. It's going to go down soon. Yeah, the, this is going to be a very long, long siege from Cloud9, though. They they can just continually throw out that barrage of missiles from Sneaky with this blue buff and a yeah, Soraka. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they have the sustain. So as long as Cloud9 don't dive, they'll eventually get more poke damage here and just wear down XDG. Ooh. Both teams, though, are looking for the skill shots to land. The Elise and Thresh combo is very, very potent. One of those CCs lands on somebody. They can lock them up. Oh, walks it right in. Meteos playing the sneaky roll. We'll see what they can get out of this for the rest of it. Sneaky has been staying mid and trying to throw out shots on that turret. Looks like they're trying to adapt to whatever Cloud9 is doing to set themselves up for Dragon. So XDG has to worry about this. They need to either lose that turret or lose that Dragon, one or the other, because both is probably going to mean Cloud9 coming out on top of Well, the they do They do have Ziggs, and Man Cloud's mm -hmm. really strong right now. He's got the Death Cap on top of Athene, so they have ridiculous zone control around Dragon, which is where it's most important. His minefield can take up almost yeah. the entire entrance to the river here. So Man Cloud is going to be a really big part in this. Balls actually gets hooked in and the fight starts. Subjugates right away along with Blade of the Rune King. He's still quite tanky because of that Banshee's Veil on top of the fight. And they get XDG clustered up right now. They got to be very careful. The long drawn out fights. Nobody goes down. That's an advantage for Cloud9. They have so much sustain here. And they're Wish. taking this opportunity to go on the Dragon. Now it's their turn to take it. Grabbing up the second or third Dragon of the game. Second one for them. Cloud9 now going to be able to look at mid here. Wish is down. Meteos' ultimate is down along with Subjugate. They're trying to do what they can now. Push on to mid. Should be just a few shots here from Sneaky, but it looks like Ziggs does have the mana and the wave clear. So the reason it's taking so long for Cloud9 to get this turret is not just because of the wave clear of Ziggs. It's because Corky, uh, even though Sneaky does have Sheen, you know, he can get mm -hmm. a very strong single auto attack. He has to be very careful because Corky's auto attack range definitely puts him in danger of either the Death Sentence or the Cocoon. So they have to play around all this wave clear that's going to come out of nowhere. And then one of these skill shots that can land onto Corky. So Corky has to play very safe. That combination of Void Ooze into a hook. You can see what XDG is trying to put together there. Almost worked out onto Sneaky. Gets himself to safety though, and he continues to build that Triforce. Look at the CS there, 222 to 156 of Zuna. Gotta remember though, Kogma can still tank bust, get some quick kills in the late game once he gets all that damage out. It's gonna take a while though. This is definitely a war of attrition here. This is probably gonna be a pretty long game because both of the teams siege up very well and wave clear, but it's hard for them to actually get through the each other's defenses. You can see in that graph the focus they actually put on each other's buffs. maneuver. <laughs> Getting some extra CS there with the Dragon's Ascent. Gotta do what you gotta do. Stay alive. It's a dangerous world out there on the Rift. Starting off super weak. Cloud9 and XDG looking to put a tag in that loss column for each other. Now XDG would definitely like this win. It would be huge momentum coming into super weak. Really put Cloud9 in a situation where they'd be scratching their heads. As it happened once Ooh. before, it can easily happen again. Still pressuring this mid turret. The pink wards are down for XDG, so they can cover their, their blue buff. Man, Cloud really needs that this game. We saw that it was something Cloud9 had focused. Because Cloud9 have had such trouble getting through the Ziggs and Kog'Maw wave clear, they've actually decided to go with the split push here. So they're not trying to get the mid turret anymore. They're trying to buy time for balls to get the upper hand on the top lane, and he finally does get it. But this four-man squad at mid still right. can't commit until they know that someone on XTG is in a different lane. And right now, they do not have vision. Soon, they shall see Zuna farming top, though. And something we're not seeing in this game, Kobe, we did last week, was a heck of a lot of teleport for the top lane. Uh-huh. Teleport is such a good summoner now, uh, with the changes reducing the cooldown. But here goes aggression onto Mancloud, and they get his flash out. Ooh, Mancloud very low on this. 
Thank Inferno Bomb to return a little bit of that medicine over to Cloud9. No fight, though. Keeping it safe. And obviously, like we were just saying, teleports. It wasn't Benny or Balls entering that fight. And now it's going to be Sneaky on the split push in the bottom lane. But the team's hovering towards him. So it's a safe, safe progression. They've pretty much given up trying to siege up against Kogma Ziggs here. And they're constantly split pushing. Now they're just going Ooh. for the engage. Balls goes right on to Zuna. <laughs> Push him right back. Good shield, though. Coming out from Sheep with the Lantern. This will be the final few shots that they need. Mid turret finally falls oh God. for Cloud9. The blue steals. Oh. Against XDG. And like we said, even with those pink wars there, XDG had two pink wars that cover that spot wasn't savable. Yeah, Cloud9 are just kind of strangling them. All this extra gold that they have, they have so much more vision. They're able to invest all this extra money into vision here. And blue blue buffs are such a huge objective in games like this where where it's just siege wars. Yeah. Because XCG really, really want that on Ziggs. Then they'll be able to defend for as long as they want. But if Sneaky and High continually get these, then Cloud9 will be able to stay there forever. Gotta love having the mana battery running around if you don't have a blue buff, which Sneaky doesn't have to worry about at all right now. Also looking at highest build, he did it last time on Soraka, throws in the Rylai's Crystal Scepter there, which becomes that much more annoying when you're trying to get away from the sky falling on your head. 30 minutes on the clock, Benny approaches the top lane and Ball's natural environment here as he's just farming away. I really like Lemon's... Uh build right now too because he's got mm. the extra damage on turrets from his gold generation item the frost queen's claim and then he also can get sneaky out of one of those cc's that will land uh, with his mikhail's so it allows them to actually get closer to the turret get in that dangerous zone get some damage onto it smithy in the dangerous zone right there though mm. gets caught on his way through his own jungle dangerous zone indeed just when you think it's it's Small enough to squeeze through. It is not. They take down the spider. 55 seconds on the clock, so that is a perfect time for that to happen. He's got 20 seconds to haul ass over to Dragon. Ziggs is also down now, so that's a pretty big cooldown for XDG. Cloud9 really want to take advantage of it. They got Hi. good vision. Is that a barrier high? I think it was. Oops. Yeah, he threw down barrier on that one. He just wanted to look good as they engaged the fight. They said, we made a mistake. Let's make a correction. They do get a good quick kill. Xmitty uh -oh. still down for this engagement, and XDG is kind of forcing themselves to do a little bit more. They finally stop on that one. 20 seconds to Dragon, and they're going to lose their second tier in mid. The relentless assault from this Cloud9 team, though. It's very, very hard to play against if you're... Uh, Ziggs keeps yep. getting denied blue buff. So we were definitely going to see many more awards from Cloud9 deep in the jungle. I think the floodgates were open as soon as that mid turret went down. A little too much control over to Cloud9. Wow. Dragon coming in. Bottom lane not taking more, but a few star calls to go in for high. 248 to 312 in CS. Man Cloud still trying to do what he can at 3 and 0, but over 100 CS now between the AD carry. Sneaky at 283. For XCG, I mean, all of their money is, or most of their money is really focused on Demand Cloud because when you're playing on the defensive, then a lot of times your wave clear duties fall onto your mid laner, especially if your mid laner is Ziggs. And he's been doing his best to try and uh, save his turrets by wave clearing. That just means that all the money is also focused on him. So his play becomes so important in every single fight. If he's not there, then uh, XDG really have no power at all. Easy cleanup in the top lane. All's on his trundle, 253 to 202. He's been able to soak up a bit more. That's really now been since Benny's been dying. Ball's just on the map more. You're gonna get more experience and more CS power in numbers. Five to zero in the turrets. XDG has yet to break the map of Cloud9 right now. They're trying to get back their own jungle if they can do that here. So it's going to be some more slow game here from Cloud9. They've got a giant, giant lead. Yeah. And they can slowly wear XDG down with it. Take their entire jungle. Take every single outer turret. Every team's main objective here is to go 4-0 and zero in Super Week. Cloud9 coming in very hungry for this one. They usually do have those strong Super Week finishes. Looks like they're going to start off with one in week 11. Balls and Lemon Nation, top lane, but you see the pincer coming from the bottom here. Just under them at red buff is the rest of Cloud9 ready to take down the second tier top. 
All right, so Cloud9 can siege up very well while the Mikhail's is active, but it's on cooldown for a little bit longer. They actually do a good job splitting here. Benny's got himself into trouble because Meteos screening for Sneaky. Nice damage coming out of Sneaky. Gets that last Whisper finished. Had it for quite a while, but it easily gets so much damage on your big missiles. Even missiles coming oh, out. Oh, this could be an easy tower dive. Two members coming up from Cloud9. What a pillar coming in. Shocking and just slowing three people. Sheep couldn't really get out of that one. He has 200 health leaving the fight, and it's going to be a smithy. He was on the left side of the pillar and realizes it's only death. It's going to bring him back home. Turret's going down to the top lane as Cloud9 looks to take the first inhibitor turret of the game. And they can go all around the horn on this. Every lane is pushed up. Yeah, they can go straight in. Look at Sneaky's build. This is a tower destroying build. He's got all this flat attack damage and the Trinity Force on it for the empowered attacks. Mm -hmm. Going on the inhibitor turret, Benny. Looking to be the one in between that goalpost, but Sheep tries to get the lockup. They oh. go right on the man cloud. Sneaky gives him a one, two, three, and a right hook to end that one. 13 to four. The first inhibitor goes down at 35 minutes. We're looking at a 16,000 gold lead as Cloud9 starts to take over XDG's base. I think this is going to be game here. No coming back from this. Super Week starts off with a very quick game. 35 minutes in, the aggression from both teams was neck and neck. As soon as Cloud9 grabbed that mid turret, it became a really just run down the mid lane, then to the top, and it's what you see here, Kobe. We're looking at the Nexus turrets and probably the Nexus. Yeah, bottom lane especially. We talked about bottom lane being a big factor when XG won last. This time around, Sneaky Elimination absolutely Watched it. There's the man himself, top of the challenger list. Top of the game with Corky. Cloud9 comes up with the win over XDG. 21 and 4. Gotta feel good. Yeah. Getting close. Can't get the last record. People say it would be ridiculous for them to have a season like last season. Yeah. This is. is pretty close. Okay, they didn't match it, but this is pretty close. Very lemon pants for Lemon Nation there. He made sure to bring out the game day pants. Try pants, if you will. So with another win under their belt, XDG finding a loss in the solid roster that they were able to find a win with against Cloud9. C9 really came prepared on this one. Banned out everything Xmithy wanted to use, then took what Xmithy wanted to use, and just made it pressure on the lanes of XDG. They had to come out on top because Xmithy was...